decorate cookies, we have to make cookies. And so I'm starting off in my bowl here. I have some white granulated sugar and I'm adding a pound of unsalted butter, room temperature unsalted butter. Why no salt? Well, because I can control how much salt I'm actually going to be putting in as opposed to having just a random amount in the pound of butter. I personally find that the cookies are too salty when using salted butter. And next, room temperature. Why? Well, we use room temperature butter so that we can actually combine the ingredients. If you've ever tried to butter your toast with refrigerated butter, it's impossible. It is rock hard. And so all we're going to do is damage our mixer and that's why we need room temperature butter. Everyone has different kitchen equipment. I'm using here just a simple handheld mixer to combine the butter and the sugar. Here is my sugar and butter combined and now I can add my eggs to this mixture and I'm going to be adding my vanilla now as well. I use clear vanilla. You can use the brown, obviously. And now you can mix this up. I'm going to scrape the bowl just to make sure my eggs are getting well mixed into the butter and sugar mixture. Cookie dough is pretty straightforward up to this point. Now this is when you have to start kind of paying more attention to your dough. First of all, the recipes that I've seen in books and online often call for too much baking powder. This is not a cake and this is not like a chocolate chip cookie. It needs to keep its shape and if you put too much baking powder in your dough, it's going to cause warping. Your cookie will expand and sometimes move in a shape in a way that you do not want. And so for this big batch, I'm only adding half a teaspoon of baking powder. Next, the flour. Now, recipes just say standard amount. Say, let's say add four cups of flour. Well, you know, sometimes you've used smaller eggs, Perhaps your butter has less moisture in it. All these kind of things really impact the cookie dough. And so I suggest you with, withhold one cup at least of your flour, combine your ingredients, and then look and feel your cookie dough to see if it is the correct consistency before just dumping the whole amount in there. It's impossible to take out the flour once it's in there. So I suggest that you just Add it slowly. Don't just add the whole, whole amount. It's less of a situation when you're making like chocolate chip cookies, but when it comes to this type of a cookie, you do not want to just add a big, big amount of flour. You'll regret it most of the time. So the recipe calls for eight cups and I've got a considerable amount here in my bowl that I'm not adding. And now I'm going to mix all this up. I'm scraping underneath my dough here and as you can see it's pretty dry already it's not sticky that you know I'm glad that I didn't add all that flour because now it would be near impossible to mix had I added all that flour now you touch it and you can feel how wet it is if it's sticking on you and stuff it's it still needs more flour but it's not that well combined yet. Okay, let's let's feel it. You see, I'm touching it and it's not sticking to my hand. Looks like the consistency is pretty good. It's a little bit sticky along the sides. I'm just going to sprinkle some flour around and I'm going to get in there with my hands to knead it into a ball. You see I have some dry areas in the bottom there and it's really, I've made probably I can say thousands of cookies and you just get a feel for it. There's no standard 
You know, you buy your eggs from one week to the other. They could vary a bit. The batch of butter could be different. You're better to just feel it a bit. You see there, the dough is really quite dry. And you can really see it on your hands. If the dough's not sticking to your hands, that's a good indicator that it's that it's the correct consistency. I'm going to add just a small amount. And it's going to be good. Now here's my cookie dough and you can see my hands are completely clean when I touch it. Now for the next step. Just wanted to show you how much flour I didn't end up using. There's a, more than half a cup here of flour that I didn't end up using to uh, make my cookie dough. Would have made it too dry. Getting ready to roll my cookie dough. Here I have a rolling mat, rolling guides, and a rolling pin. These guides, as you can see here, I'm going to have my dough here, and this ensures that my dough is all the same thickness. This will make a nice, flat, consistent cookie, and I won't have to worry about it not being even when it comes time to decorating. I'm adding a piece of parchment paper. I'm going to portion out my dough here. You can flatten it out a bit with your hands, like so. If it's sticking to your rolling pin, you can add a bit of flour. And you can see here, the rolling pin stops because of these guides. We'll remove our excess dough. Here I have a Christmas tree cutter. And you press down and you can just do a little circle and it pushes away the excess and there we go. Refrigerated cookie dough allows the shape to, to hold together, you see? It's not warping and getting all broken. So cut as many as you need. Try to cut them close together. This will make less scraps. Once it's the correct thickness, I'll be able to just trim off the excess around the edges so that it's the correct size to fit on my cookie sheet. Then I'm going to use the actual parchment paper to lift up my cookie dough and transfer it to the cookie sheet. Once on the cookie sheet, I'll be able to take that and put it in the freezer. Here I've got a, a cutting board just to spare my work surface. And now I've got my cookie dough and it's frozen. I'm going to place that on top of the cutting board. And freezing your cookie dough will allow to get a really much sharper line when cutting with a knife and cutting tends to warp the shape not to mention the actual edge is not clean here I'm just using my card as my guide you might want to wait for it to thaw out a little bit but by the time you get through them the dough is pretty much thawed out so follow the card Using frozen dough will really give you a cleaner line when you cut and it will stop the dough from warping which is inevitable as you pull on one side it pulls on the other. It's very pliable. Here we go. Let me see, it just pops out. Once you've got your cookies cut, I place them back on a cookie sheet and then I freeze my raw cookies. I find that if I bake the cookie frozen, I take it right from the freezer and I put it in the oven, the shape holds better. There's less warping. Once I have my cookie sheet full of cookies, I put another sheet of parchment paper and I stack. You can stack them very high. 
you've got a big batch of cookies you're working on, just freeze them all and then bake them completely frozen so you only take a few out at a time depending how many you can fit into your oven. Here's my cookie sheet I just wanted to talk to you about here, the outer perimeter. This outer perimeter actually generates heat. So you have your cookies here on the surface and it, the cookie that's closest to this edge will tend to bake quicker. You might want to check them often in the oven. If you see a darkening on this side, you can just rotate your cookie. Talking about baking time, there's no real baking time. You have to look at your cookies. Since everybody rolls their cookies at a different thickness, everybody's oven is slightly different, you're better to watch over them carefully and check to see how they're coming along. Usually it's at least 10 minutes, but if you have very small cookies, that could be less, depending where it is, on which shelf it is in the oven. If um, you have your cookies high up, they won't bake as quick as if you have them low to the heating element. You don't want to have them too close to the heating element because they'll really brown underneath. Here's my cookie sheet. I've got some parchment paper on it. I always use parchment paper. Two reasons. The cookies slide right off and also the lighter color allows them to bake nicer. The underside tends to get very brown if you bake directly on the cookie sheet. The dark color of the metal is a conductor. Right now, placing them on the cookie sheet, you don't want to press them along the edge like I said before. This gets very hot. They do expand during the baking process, so you don't want to have them too tight together. You're better to have a little bit of space to allow them to expand during the baking. You're not going to have them, you know, together like this and then they, they'll melt together and this will cause the shape also to warp. So if they're frozen, I'm putting them in the oven frozen, a 350 degree oven and there is no set time. Each cookie shape is different. This is artisanal so you just have to watch them, check on them, look at them in the oven and see how you feel they're coming along. Here's another batch of cookies here. You see the shape? I can do this with them fit a few more and then you see here the edge of my cookie sheet you don't want to have that too close. Give you a peek of the baking process so here you see the spikes coming out they're baking much faster than here these actually could come out of the oven but these have to be baked a little bit longer. Here are my other cookies see the outer perimeter is darker than the center they bake from the outside in and this one here is darker than the other six. It's more baked. I have a convection oven. I guess the fan was blowing more on this particular cookie. That's why you need to watch them a lot. You have to be your face in the oven till you figure out your oven and how long they take to bake. Let's flip it over so we can see. You see the underside is nice, just a little bit browned. Here is the template that I use to cut the cookies and if you can see here, look at how much it has expanded during the baking process. And even with reducing the baking powder, which I always do with my cookie dough, look I've got at least a good half inch there. Moving my cookies to a cooling rack. The, the steel from the cookie sheet is hot, it takes longer for the cookies to cool if you leave them on there. If you want it to go quicker, you move it to a cooling rack like this. The air will get under them and they will cool faster.